Hello everyone, Fancy here, you're watching Division, and today we're discussing how, for some reason yesterday, so many different outlets decided to all interview GameStop employees at the same time. I saw IGN, Polygon, and then a bunch of other websites were covering the fact that IGN, Polygon, and, and a bunch of other websites were also getting stuff sent in by employees, and it was just like... Sites that were big that were getting people to talk to them, sites that were slightly smaller getting people to talk to them, and sites talking about sites talking about people talking to them. Which is strange to me, because it, it doesn't make any sense why all of a sudden yesterday was the big day to have the GameStop interview-a-thon, because this has been a thing for a very long time. I mean, they've reported about how they're draining down the sink as we speak. I guess the toilet would be a better term because they're kind of a pile of crap and you know it's just a weird thing and I decided to talk about how people are talking about how people are talking about it. A lot of the different things that were sent in were of course things that we know already but I like the quotes that they got a lot and I haven't had people send in their own quotes for a long time so let's go ahead and discuss some of the best things that they covered on these different websites what they may have missed and just kind of the weird phenomenon that this is, is that they're, they're all just doing this at the same time and so late into the game. I mean, they could have interviewed people months ago when it came to this. Now, I understand why Polygon took so long. Theirs was very well laid out, and I, I loved the way they had their article all laid out. It had it all the different sections of the different problems, and we're going to discuss the different sections, what they're missing, what they got right. Let's dive right in. So first of all, I'm going to get these different IGN quotes out of the way because we're going to be mostly talking about the Polygon article because that, like I said, is the best laid out. The tactics, especially the tech trades and Power Rewards memberships, feel like we're shoving it down people's throats. No, duh. I've been saying that for years. That is one of the main reasons that GameStop is circling the drain. And that's why a lot of people are... A lot of people said the same thing on here. A lot of people are saying, this has completely tarnished GameStop's reputation. And this is exactly why GameStop is dying. Not just because they're not competitive in so many other ways, but because they're just not friendly to the customer at all. They continually shove pre-orders and we'll get into this many of us lost bosses and peers and had them replaced with more competitive and less empathetic leadership i've heard this i've heard this firsthand from my own manager friends and the fact that they are indeed getting pressured a hell of a lot more and people's jobs are at risk it's insane how much the culture of GameStop has gone from bad to worse because it already was a very numbers-based company. And yeah, you're going to be still, well, you're going to make sales, Fanta. No, duh, but you don't have to be all stick. You can also be carrot, you know, and try to help people improve. Understand that there are sometimes bad weeks, but like they said, they've gotten a lot less empathetic because they're on a sinking ship. Even rude people laughing about it. Like, people losing their jobs it was a comedy. Well, they should have known that that their life isn't a tragedy. That it is, in fact, a comedy. So I had to do it. I love the Joker movie. Okay. But seriously, I, I get this. And this was coming from a manager that was talking about how, after the news report of how the stocks were sinking, how GameStop was losing a ton of money, how a bunch of stores were closing, how they would have people come in constantly and ask if their store was going to be closing, if GameStop was going to be holding on. And she goes on to say, oh, it was even more frustrating because we are a profitable store. It's like, actually, wouldn't it be the other way around? It'd be more frustrating if you really were one of those stores. But she's like, oh, I believe in the lease and all these other things. It's like, yeah the lease might be the only thing saving you. Even if you're making money, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're safe. I love this too. GameStop employees report extreme pressure from desperate bosses. You can't, you can't sum that up any better. I mean, I can't even title this video better than that. I mean, good Lord, that's just perfect. Multiple interviews with Polygon, store managers and staff speak of a plummeting morale. A morale that was already way low. And yeah, it's even gotten worse, like I discussed earlier in a past video, even the GameStop Reddit, which used to be the defenders of corporate, bunch of corporate bootlickers, people that would, they were just 
corporation apologists. Whatever the company did, that was the right step. That was the right move. But now they're just laughing at everything happening. They're talking about how dead their stores are and they can't believe how stupid corporate is. One manager is quoted to have said, the company is frantic and distrustful. You can feel it in every message they send. The structure is falling apart. They're scrambling. Yes, yes they are. From what we've heard from the inside, from Camelot 331's reports, people on the corporate ladder, having half of the staff getting fired, having a bunch of the district managers and area managers getting, or regional managers getting fired, and having to take over larger areas, and just everything is going crazy. And that's why they're distrustful, because they're in a panic. They're in this paranoid state where they have to get these tech trades because that is the most profitable thing they can do right now. But we'll get into that because tech trades are definitely part of this. One of these managers is talking about, uh, let's, let's just dive into this quote because it's insane and it's exactly, again, what Camelot has been hearing from the inside. I think they'll close a thousand stores this year. This is a former store manager with many re years retail experience. Is that just Camelot? Are they just quoting Camelot now? They have had to cut costs. The game's retail market is dying. Another manager said, My store is well known for solid sales performance, but customer traffic has dipped significantly in the past two years. Aside from some extended high traffic days like Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and a major game release, we're missing our daily sales plans every single day. Like I said, on the Reddit, they're talking about how dead these stores are. Whenever I go into GameStop now, I used to have to worry about there being a line because of how understaffed these places are. I was like, great, if there's any sort of line at all, I'm just gonna leave, I'm not even gonna get what I was here for. I have not seen a line in so long inside of GameStops. Even the GameStops located in or near malls are just deserted. And this time of year, at least here, is something called snowbird season where all the freaking people from the other side of the coast get over here. And yeah, it's mostly old people, but there are definitely still families that come during this time of year to enjoy the weather and go hiking and all that sort of stuff. Doesn't matter. It has not increased their sales at all. I mean, a lot of those grandparents would buy games. I saw this all the time during snowbird season. Yeah, the traffic picked up and it was full of old people and they were buying games for their grandchildren while they were visiting or to take back with them. That's not happening from what I've seen. And I've heard of even more stores closing here. One of the first sections on the Polygon article is just about declining sales. It has sales analysts saying the same thing that I've been saying and seen that they just can't adapt to the, how, how the entire retail structure has changed. A lot of people have kind of molded with it, Best Buy molded with it. Uh, a lot of other people have kind of adapted Target, added groceries and all that sort of stuff. They've done different things to keep people shopping at their retail locations. GameStop has not done that. The fact that digital sales are becoming more of a thing, they just can't do anything about that. They're going to die because of that because their main thing to sell is video games. And all of their other quick profit schemes that they've tried to do, like board games and t-shirts and accessories and pop figures. I know there are people out there that buy pop figures, but these stores are filled with them and I feel like that fad has kind of died out. And when that fad has died out and they've heavily invested in that sort of thing, not only in financially heavily invested, but shelf space invested heavily in these pop figures, you're gonna see a huge decline in sales there too. Another part of this section is talking about higher ups in GameStop trying to assure stockholders that, oh, we're gonna recover. We're gonna recover in 2020 when these systems launch. Now there are rumors that these systems have been delayed until 2021. I don't think GameStop can hold on till 2021 if these systems don't come out. And even with these launch of these systems, I don't know that it will save the business. I understand that it will bring a lot more customers into the store. They will be backwards compatible. So used games are definitely gonna be more, become more of a thing as people either didn't have an Xbox One before or they didn't have a PlayStation 4 before. And now they're going back and buying the, the old great games for those systems. But I, if they don't 
hold on to 2021 or if these systems are delayed, they're screwed. Now, do you remember all those executives that were fired? And I'm sure lots have left as well. Well, here's a quote from one of them exactly about what I just said about what that higher up said. I don't think senior executives even believe that this is just a cyclical downturn. They're just trying to keep investors happy and pad their bonuses before they parachute out. That's exactly right. You know that these guys are waiting until the stock goes back up to cash out. The next section is about tech trades, and that is really the, the biggest thing right now with GameStop in a big negative way because they've confirmed every single thing that Camelot has said. I know a lot of people don't believe Camelot and his sources. I don't know why because he's been correct every single time. But one of the main quotes, I don't really want to go through everything about how they're, they're pushing iPhones and iPads and they're just trying to snatch the customer's phone. I think this sums it up. If we aren't hitting these goals, we are getting written up. I've had this confirmed from my own sources and Camelot sources continually talk about this. Tech trades are the newest nightmare. I know when they started introducing the GameStop credit card, it was a big thing. We had to tell people about it. We had to give people the brochure. We had to mention it every single transaction. And there was definitely the fear of getting written up if you did not push it. Now, if you did not meet your numbers during this time, they did not write you up. You got sternly talked to, but that's about it. This is a whole new level of stick. And what I mean by that is there's, like I said, no carrot in GameStop. It's only stick. And this is a sharp stick with rusty nails in it. The fact that you get written up just for not meeting these numbers of tech trades that you cannot influence really, and is such a limited item, and usually an item that is worth more at other places. Now, I know there will be people out there that defend this and say, oh, I can get more trade in credit at GameStop. I tried this number. I don't know if you're working for corporate or what, but in my history of trade-ins, I've seen what they give and I've seen what you can get for the trade-in promotions when you're getting a new phone. It's almost always better because they want you to upgrade to that new phone and GameStop does not have the ability to sign people up and transfer people's phone numbers into new contracts and stuff like that. I know it's new, con I don't know the verbiage, okay? They're not contracts anymore, but you know what I mean. They don't have the same capabilities that Best Buy and Target and Walmart have. It's funny how a lot of this plays out like a court case because I, I love this paragraph. Polygon has been shown evidence of Target sheets that managers are required to fill out demonstrating that they have given purchase quotes to 50 customers on their used phones every week with five leading to a transaction. It's baffling to me that a company that should know exactly what they're doing wrong continues to do the wrong thing, but even worse now, because the thing that was killing their company was treating their customers like crap. And now we have employees asking what kind of phone the customer has and then offering to buy it off of them. What a horrible sales environment this is. What a horrible place to shop. There is a reason that they do not have people shopping there anymore. There is a reason that these stores are empty and have no lines and I can just go in there. It's because nobody wants to shop there anymore. They already, it already had a bad reputation of people not wanting to shop there for the pre-orders, the GPGs, Power Up Rewards card, because of all those things that were already getting shoved down your throat. Now you're adding another one and an even more intrusive one. And I know a lot of you might be saying that, oh, Fanta, these write-ups and these warnings for not getting your tech trade goals, they're probably just warnings. They're not really going to do anything about it. No. It has been confirmed that after three, you are fired. That's right. You are fired after missing your tech trades three times in a row. GameStop has gone from the place that everybody wants to work because video games to the most insane, tyrannical, strict, punishing, and oppressive place to work. This sounds worse than Walmart. 
I'm going to be real honest. And I have frequently said that my time at GameStop was infinitely better than working at Walmart. But you know what? I would rather work at Walmart than work in this sort of environment. This is disgusting how they're treating people. These are people that are trying to pay the bills. Some of these people might have families. And this is how you're treating them. You are putting them in a state of fear where they're not going to be able to do their job to the fullest. They're not going to be able to be as helpful to customers. They're not going to be able to be as friendly because you have put them in some really crazy fascist environment where if they do not meet their numbers three times in a row, they're fired. So they're going to be even more pushy. The more pushy they are, they're going to push away customers. And the more they push away customers, the less likely that they'll meet their numbers. And then you'll just fire them. And you'll cycle somebody else in. And the same thing will happen over and over and over until GameStop is sunk. Completely sunk. Talk about lack of empathy. If these managers had any at all, they'd be fudging the numbers and sharing the, the trade-ins. And that is what we did at our store. If somebody was really suffering, I would try to help each other out. Because none of us wouldn't get in trouble. It wasn't nearly this bad at all. But we still wanted to help each other out because we knew what kind of BS you could get put through. Here's a quote that sums up everything I just said about having to be pushy towards customers and how much worse it's gotten. I survived the circle of life nonsense, said one manager. That was a really trying time. About a year ago, things seemed to get better. In fact, there was a whole training bit about not overwhelming our customers with offers and giving them what they need versus force-fed offers. That lasted about a month before the same old rhetoric came back. It's particularly awful for the quiet customers, the ones who just want to buy their stuff and go. I keep having to hammer questions at them even though I can see they're getting annoyed. You lost a customer. If you see a customer getting annoyed and you keep going, you're done. You've lost that customer forever. And that's what I heard from countless people after I stopped working at GameStop. Hell, that's what I heard from people when I worked at GameStop. I had people come to my store specifically because they knew that we were not going to do that to them. The circle of life was for some reason reported for a short amount of time. People talked about how they survived it. But the thing is, is the circle of life has always been a part of GameStop. Since day one, I remember seeing some sort of circular thing that they showed me. It was on the back of my name badge. This was not something that was short and it was not something that went away. This is the core reason why GameStop is dead. It's because of the circle of life, which ironically, like I said, is the reason for their downfall. I'm going to get a few more quotes and then I'm going to wrap up the video here. But it's really interesting seeing all of these different quotes that have reflected a lot of the things that have been saying over the years and this is one that really hit me particularly because it was something that made working at GameStop fun and made shopping at GameStop fun but is gone. Midnight launches used to be like block parties especially for bigger titles like Call of Duty. We would have lines wrapped around the entire shopping center with music, food, and the games running on multiple TVs but as the years went on they got smaller and smaller. The last few struggled to attract 20 people. Most people are buying digitally or having the game shipped to them. It's true. I've gone to a couple midnight releases these past few years, and they have dwindled down to nothing. And I think another reason behind, not just because of digital, not just because of the ease of shipping stuff, because you don't get it during midnight. A lot of people do want it, that night now digital people are getting it that midnight but people who ship it are not getting it as soon as you know they normally would if you're willing to go out of your way to a midnight launch then obviously you don't care about shipping a game that's not why midnight releases are dead i think midnight releases are dead because they started they started whittling down what the event was before the even stopped having people show up i remember our store used to try to go all out and it kept ramping up. It had one year we had we rented out a whole trailer and had a bunch of people playing the new game before it came out. We had tournaments. 
of the older version. It was like Halo tournaments going on. We had pizza for people. We had music. We had lasers. We had a fog machine. We had all of these different crazy things going on. And that was several different midnight launches. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, our budget for these things, gone. Gone. No warning. It didn't peter out. It wasn't slowly taken away. It was one day. It was just gone. And with that, I started to see the decline of people showing up to these things. And I think it's because people know that these are no longer events. These are no longer something to be excited about. Nobody cares about your midnight launch. It's just going to be me picking up the game and waiting in line. You can go over to Walmart. You can go to any other store that is having a midnight launch and get your game. And because of that, you've lost your competitive advantage. You have lost the reason to attend. Other sections of this that I have not covered in other videos are talking about how many stores are not making their sales because they simply don't have the product. They're talking about how they get less games with the pre-orders. They used to get one copy extra of the game for every three pre-orders. Now it's every five. So they're getting less copies of the game, so they're running out faster, and they're not making as many sales. People talking about during the holiday season, not having enough systems, not having enough of a particularly used game, that's crazy. You can easily ship between stores. I used to do it constantly to make sure this sort of thing didn't happen. Another thing that people talk about that I have not discussed in videos is the fact that they sell digital cards in the store and that might also be a contributing factor to their downfall. These different employees discuss how it may be getting people used to buying in this digital environment. It's like a little taste of it, of the convenience, and then they realize, oh, I don't have to shop at GameStop anymore to get these cards. I can just put my credit card in. I don't think that this is a huge factor in their downfall, but I could definitely see that angle as to it's definitely not helping their stores any. I had people constantly come in and buy digital cards all the time for the same game, so I can't really speak to the fact that it was killing our sales or anything like that. There were people that were not going to be buying a physical game anyway. It was usually for free-to-play games, but... I see where they're coming from and it really can cannibalize the profits of your used games and your new physical games. Another one of the last sections talks about something I definitely have talked about and has been going on for a very long time and it's the fact that GameStop is completely short-staffed. How people have to open a loan, which I did all the time. People have to close a loan, again, had to do that all the time. And just have to be in the middle of the day with nobody helping. That is a huge issue for so many reasons. Mainly the reason I said earlier, if there was a giant line, I don't want to deal with it. I'm going somewhere else. Even if I have trading credit, it's not worth my extra time to sit around in this store while the same five previews go over and over and over with the annoying announcer on GameStop TV. And one of my first videos on this channel was called GameStop Sucks. And it was just me ranting about how short staffed the GameStop is in my local area and how much I hate dealing with it and how much of a pain in the ass it is. That was my one of my first videos on this whole retail rant video stream that I've been doing. And that's how bad it is. It was the catalyst for this whole series. So if, if something like that is a catalyst for an entire YouTube series for several years, you bet your ass that it is a huge problem with the store. Even if it costs money to have extra people in the store when you don't need them, it keeps the store clean. It keeps up the ability to have people actually help people when they come in. If it gets busy, people can handle it. Whereas if it gets busy and there's one person, a lot of people will leave the line, I've seen this, and just leave because they don't wanna deal with it. I am one of those people that will just leave my time is worth a lot more than whatever the hell I'm buying at GameStop. GameStop is not a necessary store. I'm not buying groceries. I'm buying a video game. Nobody needs video games. It is not essential to being alive. So if I can just go buy it somewhere else, which is literally anywhere else, because this store is not convenient, there you go. You've, you've lost a sale. Convenience is king. And that's what a lot of other stores have. So to wrap up this really, really long video that I did not 
mean to go this long. I just found a lot of these different quotes from this Polygon article really interesting. I have the link down below to the Polygon and the IGN article if you want to read the whole thing. I highly recommend you do. It's really interesting. I only gave a couple of quotes, believe it or not, in this long ass video. I just wanted to kind of give some background and my thoughts to some of the big quotes that I read. GameStop, it's every single time I do one of these videos, my my hope in its success goes down because I lose a lot more respect for it and my belief that it's going to hang on for a very long time also goes down because of the first-hand accounts I'm hearing and because of the constant profit loss and stupid decisions they're making. The morale of the store is not low, it's gone. Nobody cares about what happens to GameStop anymore. I'm sure most employees out there are looking for new jobs, and if they aren't, they better be doing that soon. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about these new articles, about the new information that I didn't even have. If you have any GameStop experiences you'd like to share, if you'd like me to do a video about your first-hand accounts, please send me a DM on Twitter, Instagram, or Discord. Thanks for watching, everyone. Leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe for more content. And as always, have a fantastic day. See you guys. And also tonight, I will be streaming Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with viewers. I've been saying this in several different outros of videos and cutting them out because they wound up not happening. But you know what? I want to do it tonight. So I'm doing it tonight. And I'll be doing it here on YouTube. And I'll have a tournament code up so you guys can join. It'll be a ton of fun. Please come on by. It'll be, even if you're not racing, I'm sure it'll be fun to see my ass get kicked by other viewers.